again, if I or Gerald Salente or Ron Paul said anything remotely close to let's kill somebody with a rifle, it would be like it was the end of the world. And then with other people, I mean, folks get arrested all the time for joking around about bars. Hey, I ought to shoot that guy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Bob, let's do it. Hey, I'll help you. I'll get the bullets. Conspiracy to commit murder. Boom. People are like, we were just joking. Doesn't matter, grand jury just indicted you. These people are on TV knowing nuts are out there. They know when they hype up these school shootings where they victim disarm, it advertises that's a place to go. And so I got into all of that, probably overcompensating because I was under the weather. I've never had, uh, I thought it was an allergy, but I actually had a fever last night, so I've had a chest cold. Uh, but the point is, is that, is that it was so disgusting, I blew up. Now, now Gerald wants to get into a bunch of economics today and a bunch of other big issues that are happening, but I want to get his take on this. Uh, and, of course, the uh, news website that you've absolutely got to visit uh, over there uh, is trendsresearch.com. That's trendsresearch.com. Gerald Salente is an American trends forecaster, publisher of the Trends Journal, business consultant and author uh, who's made a lot of incredibly accurate predictions, not just about events but major trends. And he's been on every major television news show you can imagine in the world. Uh, trendsresearch.com. Subscribe today. Okay, Gerald. Um, Break down your take, if you want, on the overall open assault on the Second Amendment and how it ties into everything else, uh, and uh, your take on what happened with Piers Morgan. Well, first of all, I want to say, and I want to make this 100% clear, I am 100% behind Alex Jones on his stand against the government imposing any more legislation, rules, or regulations to take our guns away from us. I am totally opposed to what they are doing, and I totally support your belief in what you're doing to protect our rights. So I want to make that really clear. And as I look at this issue, and as it evolves and devolves, the politicians are doing nothing more than using this for political capital. These are a bunch of inepts and incompetents that have failed at everything that they do. Now all of a sudden the fiscal cliff is out of the news and the official jerks who have been officially incapable of doing anything to solve the major problems are now grabbing on this gun control issue. And as you pointed out, they're all shooting off their fat mouths coming up with their solutions on how to solve the problem. As I look at the problem, this is what I see. 300 million guns out there. What are you going to control? It'll be as ineffective as prohibition. It will be as ineffective as the war on drugs. And it will be costly to everyone, and in the not only financially, but raping us more of, of our rights from us, which they love to do. They are the DC gang, the greatest rapers of human rights in the history of the United States. They love to rape us. So they're going to be totally ineffective. Number two. As you well know, and I know that you have the facts down on, the, on guns and what, who uses them and where they come from better than virtually anybody out there. And as you well know, Alex, most of the crimes that are committed using guns are committed by the criminals, the gangbangers, and the other slime out there in society. And what are, where did those guns come from? No, 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 they didn't come from mommy or daddy's closet where they weren't locked up. Those are unregistered guns. Those are black market guns. Hey, maybe they're even the guns from Fast and Furious. Who knows? So then the other issue becomes, there is a no argument for them to be imposing more rules that are not going to work. So I support your strong stand 
on we the people should be able to protect ourselves. And as you pointed out, and you showed those little weenies, I love that guy Dershowitz on there. You know, if I was around Alex Jones, and I, I would be afraid that, that, he, that he would come after me with a gun. Hey, take it easy, Alan boy. If Alex Jones came after you with a feather duster, that would have <laughs> knocked you over. So these little guys, these little boys out there that are telling us what we should do to protect ourselves, they're way off. Absolutely. Place. I want to get your next take on that. We've got breaking news, Gerald, and this continues. There's a lot of evidence this can be provocateur. Shooting outside Bakersfield, California, where we have a 50,000-watt affiliate. Uh, California sh uh, school shooting, two reportedly shot at Taft Union High School near Bakersfield. At least two people were shot. That's how Sandy Hook started was two. At Taft Union High School in Kent County, California, this morning, uh, as the suspected shooter has been taken into custody, according to local media reports, let's pray to God nobody dies. Let's pray to God. It's time to arm these schools now, folks. It's, it's, they're advertising the middle. Okay. ABC okay. News in Bakersfield said the incident happened at 9 a.m. That's just minutes ago, uh, their time. Uh, this is incredible. Gerald Salente, what's your take on that? Hey, well, my take again is, what are the other issues that you keep talking about? What kind of psychotropic drugs are these people on? What kind of cr society, a, a cruel nature of society, a culture of cruelty that we had? Who are these people that are committing the crimes? What drugs are they on that they wouldn't answer you when you brought it up that each one of these, there's records of them showing how many people on psychotropic drugs are killing this? How about the new guy Obama just nominated for the CIA? who, as I understand, is so much in favor of, quote, enhanced interrogation de uh, de uh, techniques. How about torture? Well, that's like How Dershowitz. Dershowitz wrote, wrote a paper saying torture should be normalized and they should just torture us whenever they want. So that's what I'm saying. It's not about... I mean, he's the one that's creepy. I wouldn't... I mean, we've been out to dinner and stuff. We're just normal, nice, calm guys. These are the weird, creepy monsters that, that, that think torture's good. Exactly. So what I'm saying is whatever happened just now is another American tragedy, but it has to do with the entire culture of cruelty. Oh, no, you watch all those violent video games. No, no, it's not going to affect cruelty to animals. People are into that now. That's like chic. Exactly. So what I'm saying is, no, they're not going to affect everybody violent, but people on the edge that become overconsumed with them. Again, the drugs. No one is talking about the psychotropic drugs. This is not a gun control issue. It's a mind control issue. And the minds of Americans pick up the paper today. Go look at the last study that just came out. It has nothing to do with this, but everything to do with it. Insider billionaire investors like George Soros and John Paulson have recently made massive moves into gold, purchasing what Bloomberg News described as gold hoards. Soros alone doubled his holdings in a single day. Russia's Vladimir Putin has doubled down on gold, increasing the country's holdings by over 100%. With $1.8 trillion under management, the bond king Bill Gross, the world's preeminent bond fund manager at PIMCO, has warned investors of the dangers of QE3 and inflation. And what's he betting on? You guessed it, gold. Friends, this is Alex Jones for MidasResources.com. For more than 15 years, I have exclusively used Midas Resources for all my precious metal needs. Whether it's bullion or collectibles you're looking for, Midas Resources is simply the best. I own my gold as a hedge against inflation. This Federal Reserve fiat currency could go the way of the Deutschmark and the Weimar Republic any time. In these historically dangerous times, it makes sense to physically hold gold and silver. Midas already has some of the best deals in the industry. But if you give them a call and mention the radio special, they will give you a list of the day's super specials. Midas brokers are standing by to answer all your questions at 800-686-2237. They also have a lot of informative free literature explaining the opportunities and risk of holding precious metals. They are ready to answer your questions at 800-686-2237. Again, that's 800-686-2237. School shootings just started right as Obama isn't facing re-election, right as he says he'll use executive orders.
And if you look at uh, the shootings out in Aurora, definitely had government involvement. The guy was paid under a DARPA program that was in mind control, and that's back of the paper. I mean, it just, you can't make this up. I mean, Operation Northwoods, U.S. government called for staging shootings in movie theaters and on the streets to blame their political enemies. Operation Gladio, declassified. Our government did it all over Europe. We know about it because the Italian government declassified. They worked with NATO and the U.S. government shooting up schools and things to blame political groups they didn't like. It happened in every major European country. They're running Gladio in my historical researched opinion. And now, if this isn't gang-related in Bakersfield, and my God, they could start announcing dozens of dead, just like last time where they said it was one or two, and then it was, you know, uh, two shot right now. I pray to God this is it, but either way, it's 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 they're hyping it, they're advertising school shooting, school shooting, school shooting, school shooting. They know with copycats that it, when they do TV shows about young girls cutting themselves, suddenly more girls cut themselves, and then more cut themselves, and then more. When they did when they did death education in public schools starting in 1990, suicide increased. Teaching 10 and 11 and 12 year olds how to commit suicide, they never even thought of that. It's like an option. You see, when they started advertising death by cop, people started going out and pulling more guns on cops to get killed. You, it's, it's called advertising. If, if people ran a million dollars of advertising on a local TV station saying it's fun to go to the corner of Washington and Liberty and beat yourself in the head with a hammer, there would be people that went to that corner and beat themselves in the head with a hammer. There are some people that suggestible. Most of us aren't like that. When somebody jumps off a major building, the police always station people there for the next three days because somebody always shows up, and the police in the old days would call up the media and say, please stop reporting on this. When we had real terrorism in the 60s and 70s, they had policies where they did not report on it at one time because when you report on it, it causes more of it. Gerald, I know I'm ranting, and I've got you on here to talk. Uh, we're going to play some clips coming up of Ron Paul and, and move into other issues that are very important. But, I mean, the way they're hyping school shootings as just the end, as an epidemic, uh, it's going to cause copycats to go in there and do this. They know exactly what they're doing. I mean, I went and took a few courses in media theory at a community college, and they talked about this. I mean, certainly the masters running the media know what they're doing. I, I agree with you 100 percent. It's advertising. And if this was buried on the back pages of the New York Times these incidents, rather than promoting them, they would have a very different impact. For example, they just killed, quote, 10 militants over there in Pakistan. That's not a front page story, it's a tiny little thing. It was a front page story, Obama sends more drones to, ki to kill people that have been tried, never went to court, never were charged with anything against the, uh, against the Geneva Conventions and kept doing it over and over again, it would become news, so I agree with you. As we were going out of the break, and I'm talking about what's happening to the country on a broader level and the breakdown of the culture and all of these people on psychotropic drugs, new study just came out. America, USA, USA, we're number one, we're number one. Guess what? New study just came out. We in infant mortality. Yeah, we're near number one. And narcissism. Oh, yeah, narcissism, oh yeah, but the other one was out of the top 17 nations, we rank last in longevity, and we rank, we're ranking last in as far as people being healthy of mind and body. So the, and by the way, I was just thinking, any legislation that is being passed now to that what they say to stop this crisis from continuing, I want to see studies being done on it. I want to see studies being done that what they're proposing is in fact going to work rather than them stealing my money, hiring a bunch of their flunky friends to make money on these new programs. Hey, remember that one they used to have in front of all the schools? Dare? Dare? Oh yeah, that'll keep kids away with drugs. Who are the people making money behind that? So what I'm saying, Alex, before any new legislation is passed, there should be cost-benefit analyses done as to if this is going to work, how it's going to work, and what it's going to cost. And your point that you keep making, do not stop making it. They are advertising this. 
They are promoting it. It's what prostitutes do. They're standing out there and they're hawking it like any good prostitute would do. So they are creating the culture. Long segment coming up with Gerald Salente. Uh, the Drudge Report had this up yesterday, but I'm going to cover it after Gerald leaves us. It's the most powerful article I've ever read on the Second Amendment. Americans never give up your guns from Pravda from Russia. we can to fight the globalist depending on how you look at it i probably could have done a better job on Piers morgan i'll say this if they ever let me back on there i will try to show the opposite side and be very very calm maybe take five or six valiums beforehand i'm joking i've never even taken valium but i'm told that's what people take to calm down uh but i was just angry i'm sick of the lies i know they're opportunistically trying to disarm us they could care less about a million dead iraqis in the lancet uh, journal estimate they could care less about hundreds of dead kids a year uh, when they kill innocent people, they just call it collateral damage. They could care less about fast and furious thousands of dead people that this White House shipped guns into Mexico. Their own memos came out to blame the Second Amendment. And it makes me mad. And I'm just sick of everyone kissing their butts. Uh, and, uh, you know, Larry Pratt went on there and destroyed him last night. We'll play it last hour, but he won't make the news anywhere. Uh, listen, th they're not having me back on other shows because they know it's breaking people out of their spell. Sure, they're gonna spin it and say, oh look, this guy discredits gun owners, because that's one angle, and with some people it will. But the overall thing, it scares them for the sleeping giant to awaken. Trendsresearch.com is Gerald's excellent site. We'll go to that and, and talk about some of the new trends coming out after we finish up with guns here in a moment with Gerald Salente. But first, I wanted to get his take on Ron Paul. I brought up my quote of, you're gonna trigger a new 1776, which I don't want physically. Gerald and I have talked about a velvet cultural revolution of liberty versus their cultural revolution of tyranny, a culture of Americana, quality. We're going to talk some about that. I'm clear. I don't want violence. Believe me, I'm one of the first they're going to go after. <laughs> but that's why I'm like, don't come for the guns. It will cause it. And Piers is like, and, and, and like after the show, they're like, he wants a violent revolution. You idiots don't get it. You're going to trigger it. You're going to draw first blood. You're going to push it and push it and push it and push it and push it. And I brought this up and Ron Paul said, well, I, wouldn't, I haven't used those words, but I say this is the line in the sand. This could cause a revolution. Here's Ron Paul. So you, so you think I was right then telling Piers Morgan if they try to confiscate the guns, it will start 1776 part two. Well, I don't know whether I put them in the same words, but I think I said something very similar to what you're saying. Well, God bless you, sir. I hope we can get you back again in okay. a month. Uh, Very good. Uh, what are any other websites that are important to plug? Just campaignforliberty.org? Do that, and then we'll be uh, listing some new things there because we're making some other web pages. I'm going to have a, uh, a a home page. Unfortunately, I didn't have ronpaul.com, so I'm going to have to have Ron ronpaulshomepage.com. That'll be coming up, but it's not ready yet. All right, big announcements coming soon. We'll talk to you and say hi to the family. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Great to talk to that man during this dark time. I told you, executive. They're getting us ready to see if we'll take it. Ladies and gentlemen, this could be it. All right, uh, there is that clip with the audio off, but it doesn't matter for radio listeners. Um, I, uh, I have the news here, bakersfieldnow.com. Bakersfield school officials take part in shooting survival training. Uh, this is uh, January 9th. They just had a drill at the school. Now, whether that copycat did, did the shooting now there, or whether that uses a cover, we know in Northwoods and other documents, they use, they use drills as the cover for the real shooters. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, they're so confident. They're, I, I believe they're, they're staging and provocateuring these, and you're going to see a bunch more shootings. That's why they're so confident and why he's told fundraisers, Biden will get the guns by the end of January, and they're training local police federally for forced gun confiscation, and Biden hints at outlawing unregulated private guns. 
and saying that you can't have guns that aren't registered. Well, that's what Dianne Feinstein's bill says. Gerald, let me ask you uh, the question here, uh, because it's very, very important. Uh, again, I don't want a violent revolution, but I'm not going to a FEMA camp either. So it, it, you know, de defensively, we have a right to protect ourselves in the duty. What do you think is going to happen if they physically start trying to confiscate all the semi-autos, as Feinstein's bill says, and if they go out and start SWAT teaming people and calling them terrorists who don't turn them in? What do you think, as a trends forecaster uh, who's been you know, so accurate, what do you think is going to come out of that? You'll, you'll see the same kind of thing that happened during the Prohibition. And it'll be another industry that the government creates. It'll accomplish nothing. And it'll be a failure. I mean, when you just read that statement by Biden, I, what are, were you reading that out of a comic book? They're going to confiscate all unregistered guns? I mean, come on. Where are you going to find them? In the unregistered gun dump? I mean, it's an oxymoron. How are you, how are you going to confiscate unregistered guns. They're losers. Everything they turn, they do, they turn to failure. And going back for a moment, by the way, on two things. One on, on the Piers Morgan show about the, the revolution. I believe there's going to be a revolution, and, but I've come up with something very different. And we're going to be announcing it within a few days, and I want to be on your show to talk about it more. Gerald Salenti's Four Rules of Peace. That's right. Am I in favor of guns? You bet. Do I own them? You bet I do. If I'm going to have some crazy person blowing through my place like that woman did who was protecting her children in the attic where was it in Georgia and, and shot the intruder as the intruder was going to shoot her, I want to have the will, I want to have the wherewithal to protect myself. If I see society breaking down, let's say what happens, a nuclear power plant goes berserk and people turn into animals and they try behaving like deranged, you know, rabid animals, I want to have a weapon to protect myself. No kidding. As, as, exactly. As portions of the population degenerate, because they don't know how to work, everything's always been given to them, first by their parents, then by the culture, plus the jobs are shipped overseas. As all of this is happening, we have a right, a duty, a responsibility. Of course. You know, and the other thing, Alex, when they made, after you went off the air and they, they sandbagged you there uh, <laughs> with that guy Dershowitz, the, they were talking about, oh, he's making this oh, new world order. <laughs> I want to make this clear to everybody. The new world order is not a conspiracy theory. It's a fact, and I could prove it. The new world order is the banking order. That's right. They are the ones responsible for so much of what's going on in society today. I could pick up a piece, and we'll take it in the break. I'll get my assistant to get it from the, from the CEO of UBS, saying how arrogant they were and how they shouldn't have been so greedy in nice white shoe boy language. You look what's going on over in Europe. Instead of them reporting on all of the prostitute news that they do, they're not talking about the horrors that people are living in, through in Portugal, in Spain, in Greece. The people are taking to the streets. You say, Alex, that can this be a tipping point? I don't know what the tipping point is, because the tipping point, they never see it. They will continue to rape us until their sickest desires have not been, have not been fulfilled in one area, as when raping us of our constitutional rights, and then they'll do something else. They never learn. Look, have they learned from Vietnam? Did they learn from Iraq? Have they learned from Afghanistan? No. Let's, I got it. Let's open up 35 new bases in Africa. Oh yeah, we'll come up with a name for it. They never learn. You're right. And they know though, they have learned something from history that people will resist them later. So they're buying 1.6 billion bullets. Uh, they're digging in, they're militarizing, they're surveilling, they're calling peaceful protests, terrorism, publicly, they're, they're demonizing 
the entire Bill of Rights and Constitution. Meanwhile, they are erecting all these new taxes. Now, you originally were going to come back on this week, and we appreciate you, you doing that because I know you're a busy guy, to get into the big trends coming up that we didn't have time to get to last week. Let's, let's shift gears out of the guns now. And this Bakersfield thing looks bad. Another shooting at, at a school, a government training center, and they had a drill there two days ago of a mass shooting at the school practicing taking the kids to the sports stadium, and they've actually done that now. Uh, this, this, again, just absolutely programs the youngsters to think about this and that this is an option, you know, if they lose their girlfriend and they put them on Prozac and they don't know what their name is, well, get a gun. And, I mean, this is unbelievable. Uh, but, Gerald, shifting out of the guns now, um, because, you know, you, you offered, you said, I can come back and finish because we're out of time. Uh, all the big trends that are coming up uh, other than the disarmament. I mean, that's one of them. Why are they pushing so hard to disarm us right now? Because they know... I was reading with the Chinese government starting to hoard food and uh, and we and weapons for itself against the population. Governments everywhere are digging in. How does this tie into it? That's exactly it, and and that's what we, exactly what we're writing about. There's an economic collapse going on worldwide. They know. You pick up today's New York Times or yesterday's one of the days. One of the um, the Fed the members of the Federal Reserve Board from Virginia saying that all of this quantitative easing is not going to solve anything. They know that it's, the game is going to end. And you know my saying, when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. And I firmly believe that with the National Defense Authorization Act, with the wiretapping, with all of the surveillance going on, as you pointed out, what they did with the Occupy movements, with the FBI, the CIA, the NIA, all of them watching everything that we do, they, and it's, I'm not a conspiracy crazy, I'm seeing it as I'm watching the world collapse around us, and I'm saying they're preparing for the collapse here. And so they want to have it so that they can control us, again, just like they took just like they infiltrated the, the Occupy movement and every other movement. They're do, going to do it again because we're going through an economic collapse. Here, fact. Switzerland. I used to call them the money cockroaches of the world. They are now printing more money and a, and a leverage of GDP to printing money higher than any of the other countries. The new guy they got in there in, in Japan, Abe, the new prime minister, first thing he did, they're printing more money through the Bank of Japan. You look what's going on over in Europe with Mario Draghi, former vice chairman of the Goldman Sachs gang. What is he doing? OMT, ongoing monetary transactions in white shoe boy language. In real language, keep printing money. Oh, gold, by the way, Alex, pop up $20 today. Why? Because they're depressing it, and if anybody doesn't think the game is rigged, then you're a moron to think that they don't rig things, because after all, didn't they rig the interest rates with LIBOR? Aren't we finding about, about all these inside deals that are going on? I'm making the point because it all ties together. There's an economic collapse. The only way they're keeping it going is by printing this cheap money and in the meantime, devaluing our currency. If anybody travels out of the United States and goes to an affluent nation, your dollar isn't worth a dime, ladies and gentlemen. So what's going on is that this is part of the greater collapse. And then you start putting the other pieces together. Hey, drought conditions going on. Can't bring barges down the Mississippi. Food prices going up. Oh, shortages. Hey, over there in Brazil, big problem. Can't get any hydroelectricity. Why not? Things are drying up. Don't have the water. So you keep putting this all together. The government, the nation is too big to operate from a central location. What I would like to see as part of the next revolution is secession. 
I don't want a gang of 535 telling 315 million people what to do. I don't want a guy like Biden or Boner. I don't want a person like Reid or McConnell. I don't want these losers who have created nothing but misery and hardship for all of us except their friends to keep destroying the nation. And when you look at the Bill of Rights and when you listen to our founding fathers, this is the time for me for one of the big trends that we're writing about, the secession progression. You notice how they pushed that out of the news? Do You notice how over a million people signed up for it? and no one's talking about it, but it's going on in Spain, it's going on in Italy, it's going on in Scotland, it's going on over 200 countries around the world. The nation is too bro broken to fix, and it's too big to be operated by a mafia, a Republican and Democratic crime family. You can't reform criminals. No, you don't reform the mafia. We need a new system, and that's what I'm going for. By the way, uh, last week, they had kicked them out. They had indicted some of them. Uh, remember three, four years ago, we were told Iceland's bankrupt. The 400,000 people of the uh, uh, country who are some of the wealthiest per capita in the world, they now are all bankrupted. Uh, and then it was reported by Reuters uh, and others. Uh, just amazing information last week that they actually arrested them. Now, at first, we were told all the debt was the Icelandic people's. It was something like $50 billion. Then they said, okay, it's only $10 million. Please pay it. Turned out 90-plus percent was not even their own national debt. Right. It wasn't even their own socialism, which it wasn't. It was foreign British bank debt that their criminal government had signed them on to. They protested and refused the system and sabotaged it any way they could and, 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 and went on strikes for a year until... They took the government over, they stormed the banks, and then now they've arrested the people and they're going to prison. And the bankers are trying to do you know, dirty tricks to them now. But the point is, at first England said, we're not going to let flights out of Iceland come here saying you're illegal. We're going to seize your citizens' bank accounts because a lot of Icelanders use British banks. So they just countersued them. The mafia of the British cartel, the biggest in the world, tried to say, the, our debt is your debt, and the Icelanders said, you can literally go to Hades. These nice, well-mannered folks actually reverted back to being Vikings. What, can't we follow the Icelandic model? Isn't it the way out? Isn't that the key? Absolutely, again, that is, you're going to be receiving the Trends Journal next week. Another great trend we have is the Great Awakening. There was a great awakening in this country prior to the revolution. You read it in the works of Thomas Paine. Part of the great awakening, first it began as a religious revival. And people realized that their salvation was in their own hands. It wasn't from a hierarchy of a Church of England or anybody else. That you're responsible for creating your own destiny and you'll leave this, you'll leave this life in the way that you choose to leave it by the deeds that you do on earth. That was the awakening. It then became a second part of it. Just as no longer genuflecting to the head of the church. Hold on, this is key. We're going to come back and get into this. That's right. We have been robbed. Globalism has been a curse to this country. Everything the globalists are doing worldwide is about making you dependent. I'm getting storable food. You need it because it's the only insurance that you can 100% use. I have, you know, family that are veterans and people like that uh, who can't live off their Social Security, who are disabled and things, and that's why I've bought so much food. Charity starts at home. I promote what I believe in 100%, and I believe in what they're doing 100%. And the globalists do not want you to be self-sufficient. I hope you will take action, get the six free meals when you pay for the shipping, so that you can eat them and see that it's quality. That's why I chose eFoods, is I did my research, I tested a bunch, bought a bunch. The other stuff was like cardboard or filled with MSG or made in China. So bottom line, folks, eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex. Follow the banners at InfoWars.com or call the toll-free number 800-409-5633. That's 800-409-5633.
they came out and announced we're going to have an executive order, which they'd said quietly before, where we can just ban semi-autos. And people said, no way, that's unconstitutional. So then CNN, I was watching him today before the show started back there in the coffee area, was going, it's just an executive order to use existing laws, but it's how we implement them. This isn't unconstitutional. Don't be paranoid. And they played a clip of Limbaugh saying this is a tyrannical takeover. And I saw another newscast criticizing Drudge for putting Hitler and Stalin up there. Well, they used executive action to take guns. That's what this is. See, they're always, don't be radical, don't be radical. They're the ones that are radical. And we've got to rise to their radicalness with our base rock common sense and say no. Now, Gerald Salente is covering something here of the utmost importance, and it is so important for you to support InfoWars.com, to buy the books, the videos, the magazines, the pro-pure water filters that blow the competition away, fluoride filters, all of it, InfoWarsShop.com. I haven't even plugged that today. To go there, the Buy the Pro-Gun t-shirts, the InfoWars t-shirts, to meet like-minded people. To go to TrendsResearch.com and subscribe there as well, because even if you think you know all this, this is the type of magazine, the color magazine, with great graphics and everything that you want to give people, executives, teachers, preachers, police chiefs, that can really wake them up. You can also sign up for the free trends alerts there at trendsresearch.com. But now is the time to support those of us. And, and, it's, and that's why I wish Glenn Beck wasn't attacking me and, and folks, because I want to work with everybody, okay, who wants basic liberty. Left, right, center, libertarian. If you want basic Bill of Rights and Constitution, and if you realize we've been hijacked by foreign megabanks, I'm your friend. I, I, I want to work with everybody. None of us are perfect. All of us can be armchair quarterbacks. But we better financially support Infowars.com. We better support Gerald Salente and his trends research. You'd better spread the word about these broadcasts in the local AM and FMs because they won't always be here if you don't support. Now is the time. Gerald, get back into your great awakening. Yes, and then after the religious part that people understood that their salvation was in their own hands and their own mind and spirit, then it became as well, we're not going to genuflect to the crown either. These people do not have a royal bloodline. They have not been ordained by God to rule us. And that's the works of the Thomas Paines and others. That the people revolted against the tyranny of the nobility. Well, guess what, Alex? It's the Great Awakening 2.0. They don't ride around in their coaches and, and knock everybody over like they used to when the royalty arrived. Now they have their SUVs, their motorcades. They close down the airspace, close down the highways. Every one of these creeps, now they have their jumbo jets. That's their new coaches, and they salute to the serfs down below. They wave. It's a new royalty. It's the royalty that Mark Twain so despised. It's the royalty that Jefferson wrote in his letters, how disgusting and how deranged and immoral they were when he was over in Europe. We have a new royalty. They are our set. It is. They are our congressmen and our kings and queens have become the presidents and prime ministers who by royal edict, our executive order, will tell the rest of us serfs what to do and how we should obey them. Because if we don't, they have the goon squads to make sure that they do. Unbelievable. Stay there. Appreciate him joining us today. We're going to come back and go through a blitzkrieg of news, clips, and then some calls. Uh, up on screen, if you're a TV viewer, I have an image of Thomas Jefferson next to Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, 
uh, and uh, some of the other little globalist minions there. And imagine 235 plus years later, these tyrants are trying to destroy what Thomas Jefferson helped get into place. And he was the main architect, for those that don't know. They are literally still trying to get rid of something that our forebears fought with blood, sweat, and tears and a lot of work to, 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 to put into place. And that's why they spend all day demonizing it. And I was just thinking about Gerald Salente, I'm about the old royalty that disgusted Jefferson and others. And then here is the new royalty saying, by executive decree, we'll do whatever we want. We'll spy on you. We'll kill you. We'll disappear you. We'll have the goons come after you. We are right back in that same position. Uh, and it's just amazing, absolutely amazing. Gerald Salente, we got four minutes left. You got the floor. Well, and again, you are a voice of the great awakening. I mean, if anybody doubts it, you know, they haven't been tuning in so much. And as I am and others, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, Ron Paul, nothing has changed. There's a new royalty. I'm not making this up. Do you ever see these people? Everywhere they go, there's red carpets and a bunch of flunkies either saluting, depending on the country you're in, or dressed up in some moronic uniform. And I'm saying to myself, who's paying for this? And then Obama crap? bows to royalty. But who's paying for this garbage? Who's paying for all of these flunkies to get dressed up in this uniform? I run a, I have a business. Get to work. What are you doing over here? You don't have to salute me when I walk in the door. Do they salute anybody? Here he comes. Roll out the red carpet. Nothing has changed. Look how they talk down to us. Look how they tell us what we must believe, why we should believe it, and how we should behave. There's a new Great Awakening. It's go the Great Awakening 2.0 is going to precede the Second American Revolution. And again, not one of guns and armies but one of the mind and the spirit, the heart and the soul, the dignity and the respect of the individual. Not, not what we should be saying and taking orders from our masters. I agree with you. When you talk about royalty, the red carpet was for royalty. They even have the guards around them you know, holding up standards, they're telling us we are the emperors, we are your owners, and they act just like old royal dictatorships, and they say they're above the law, they're immune, you're a slave, they twist it all, and then they take old ladies' houses. You see it in the news all the time, for some unpaid tax they can't pay so, exactly. that, so that these guys could have, you know, $15 billion in the bank. Exactly, the new royalty. Here's a quote from Thomas Paine. To the evil of monarchy, we have added that of hereditary succession. Oh, yeah, you know, one Bush, another Bush, another Bush, a Clinton, a Clinton, a Kennedy, a Kennedy. And as the first is the degradation and lessening of ourselves. So the second claimed as a matter of right is an insult and imposition on posterity. For all men being originally equals, no one by birth could have a right to set up his own family in perpetual preference to all others forever. And that's what they have done. It's their seat of power. They have become the royalty. They are in charge. They know what's best for us. Amazing. Gerald Salente, hope to speak to you soon. TrendsResearch.com. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Mm -hmm.